factor seven um the point seven the tip says that ask their teachers to allow your child to move through the curriculum at a pace that accommodates their knowledge level that's a tricky bit so i want us to discuss a little bit on that because if he or she is the only child that is lacking behind they can't accommodate that child at the pace that he or she is moving so that's a tricky part. You can discuss with the tutor on how best you can help that child to catch up to the rest of the pupils or the students. Otherwise, you need to factor in um, extra tuition for your child because you can't allow your child to bring back or draw back the rest of the students. So that's a tricky part, that, that point needs to be addressed properly so it can be done but you can't allow one child in a class to bring everybody back or to draw back their progress so if there's a case of lacking behind or they don't understand some of the topics they need to have extra tuition or extra classes to be able to be abreast with the class yes this can be a little bit tricky, as I was saying, when a parent is not in touch with teachers and head teachers, you get involved in the children's educational curriculum when the parent-teacher relationship is at its best. There might be dynamics, but make it work because of your precious children. Parents, caregivers, guardians and teachers who are in the position of caring for more than one child are prone to challenges of trying to observe, understand, and recognize each one's potential. It gets better when the time, practice, and experience working with them and at their individual level to ascertain, to find their unique ability and capabilities. It takes determination, perseverance, selflessness, and hard work to break that cycle of the challenge of being able to recognize and acknowledge children's potential. So that is an area that we really need to think about, especially parent-teacher um, relationship. If your child goes to a school, you need to have a relationship with a teacher and the headmaster or the head teacher so that anything that happens, you will be notified. If the child is being stubborn or is he or she has got a behavioral problems or behavior issues, you'll be told and then you address it accordingly. And if the child is lacking behind, you'll be told as soon as practical so that that lapses will be bridged and your child will have the liberty and the freedom and the opportunity to progress in their education. We will go to chapter 5 of the discussion which is linguistics as a foundation of child development and linguistics, linguistics is, is, is simply put language because your child needs that communication um, skill to be able to progress in life. So we will be discussing a little bit on linguistics, which is language that will help your child. Because in this area, when a child is born into an African parent um, family, and the child leaves or born, was born in the UK, how are we going to sort of tap the first language of that child? Is it that indigenous local African language of that child, of the parent, or 
the English language that he or she was born into. So there's a bit of a conflict when it comes to languages, when it comes to the African, Asian, and South American community or kids. Because their mother tongue is different from the language they were born into. So there's a conflict because we have so many experiences that the kids become very confused. They are speaking maybe Portuguese and at the same time speaking English in the, at home. They don't know what their first language is, whether it's Portuguese or English. They mix all of them up together, especially when growing up from zero to maybe seven or eight. They have two languages. So when they go to school, they speak the English. When they come home, the parents speak their foreign um, local language then. So there's a bit of a conflict. So we need to differentiate between the mother tongue, mother tongue and then the, um, the first language that they were born into because they weren't born in Asia, they weren't born in Africa, they weren't born in South America or Caribbean. They were born in the UK or the America or the United States of America. So they were born into a language which is English and their parents speak a different language. So it's a very tricky area and uh, as a parent you have to understand that you have to give the kid opportunity to also understand what they have been born into so that they have the knowledge they understand especially when they are growing up. So linguistics is the basis and foundation of all children because it defines them and makes them understand or makes them stand out as unique individuals during their developmental process. It is through language, communication and literacy that their potential is characterized. Assessment is made through observation and communication and that determines one's intelligence. It is only through language and communication that individuals can relate to and understand one another. And that is the crux of society and humanity as a whole. In all aspects of life, it is only language that determines global existence in terms of governance, nuclear family, traditions, culture, race, religion, extended family, communities, societies, ethnic groups, color, gender, and humanity in its totality. Language brings us together to be able to interact and understand one another without commotion and chaos. It is very, it is the very fabric of our society. So you see, language is a very, very important aspect of our lives and is that is the first thing we learn when we come into this world when you are born into this world there is something called language that characterizes you that defines you that makes you a human being and that will allow you to communicate in your entire life so linguistics is a scientific study of human language. Linguistics can be classified into three categories or subdivision of study. Language form, number one, language meaning and language in context. The earliest known activities in descriptive lang linguistics have been attributed to Panini around 500 BC before Christ was born BC with his analysis of Sanskrit in Asadai so this is a, a, a brief history of where language emanated from one subdivision of linguistics is the study of language structure or grammar this focuses on the systems of rules followed by a user of a language. It includes the study of morphology, that is the formation and composition of words. Syntax, the formation of composition 
of phrases and sentences from these words and uh, phonology that the sound system phonetics is a related branch of linguistics concerned with the actual properties of speech sounds and non-speech sounds and how they are produced and perceived by individuals in society and the world so when it comes to linguistics language it is a very profound and very imperative aspect of our life in society so we will get back to that and then delve into it as our kids grow and pick up the language that they were born into and then the language that is their second tongue or their mother tongue we see and we know what happens when it comes to languages thank you for watching we'll be back with the continuation